All right, welcome to the second channel where I make videos about whatever and then I don't really edit them. So for this first video, I have a question from Discord saying, uh, I got an idea for an intro where bubbles form into my username and then the bubbles float up, up and away. So that's what we're gonna be making today. And so I guess we should start with letters. So um, you could do this directly in geometry nodes. We're gonna do most of it in geometry nodes, but um, just to make it a little easier, we're just gonna shift A and add in a text object right here you know, write whatever you want, whatever. And I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees on the X, come over here to the, uh, the properties panel. I'm just gonna center align this, and then under geometry, we can also extrude it a little, you know, however thick you want, it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, and then we're going to create a separate object, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm just gonna use a plane right here and then I'm gonna hide the text like that. And with the plane selected, we can go into the Geometry Nodes workspace, make a new one, and I'm going to drag the text into here and make sure that this is set to relative, all right? And now we're not really gonna use this group input. We're gonna plug the geometry in right here. And you can see we have you know the, the text like that. So this is a different way of making text in Geometry Nodes. Um, but we're going to distribute points on the faces like this and basically you just want to turn it up until you can read what is written right here um, so you can turn it up pretty high like that so you can read it pretty easily and if it looks too thick like this you can um, select the text right here and I think under geometry we have is it geometry let's see uh, offset right here. You can use that to make it skinnier like that. And now you can read it a little better. All right, select the plane again over here. And basically what we're going to do is uh, distort, uh, just like, you know, push all of these around with a set position node like this. But before we move them around, we want to capture the position. So you can use a um, capture attribute node, but I'm going to use a store named attribute just because I like using them. We need to set this to vector because that's what the position is. We can plug this into the value right there. Um, I'm just going to name this end because that's the, uh, the end position, but it doesn't really matter what you name it as long as you remember what you named it. So now we're gonna push this around with some noise. Just bring in a noise texture right here. You can plug it in directly, um, but first I want to offset all of these because these uh, give you three different values. The color option gives you three different values um, that are between zero and one. So it's always gonna push in the positive direction that way. So let's just use a vector math subtract node. We can keep this plugged in so we can see what is going on. And let's just subtract everything by 0.5. Then we can duplicate this and change it to scale, which is just like a multiplication, except you know it's like setting all of these to the same number. It's just the same thing. Uh, we can push this as far as we want right here. And then let's make a new one. I'll just set this to add and set all of these to zero. And we can drag this down right here. So I have a camera set up already. I just do by default in all of my, you know, uh, Blender files. So I'm just going to press zero. We can look through this. Um, it probably makes sense to make sure that you can actually read uh, it. So let's select this, the text, and just make sure that it's small enough so that you can actually read it. All right. Okay, but I want the bubbles to be off screen basically. So we can bring them like down here like that. And then we can get uh, another set position right here. And we're going to mix between the current position at this point right here and this end position right there. So we can bring a named attribute, can select this, and you can see we have end right there. It's already saved. And it turns to a vector for us because that's what we saved it as a, over there. Um, we can duplicate the position. And I'm just going to drag this out, search for mix. 
And what we're looking for is the mix node set to vector like that. So I'm just gonna plug the end into the second slot, the B, and our current position into A. Now if we put this into position right there, it will let us scroll between the two, basically. All right, and then, so we're gonna be able to animate this, um, and we'll do that at the end when we have everything set up. Then I'm gonna use another set position, and this is gonna be for when they drift away. So we can use the same noise texture over here. Um, basically what I'll do, I'll just duplicate these. I'm using Shift D to duplicate, by the way, in case you didn't know that. Um, I'm gonna use uh, the noise texture after the subtraction right here. And we can drag this a little closer. I'm using G to move that. Let's plug this into offset right here and set the add on the Z to zero. And I'll turn this down pretty low also. And um, we'll animate these values too to make it float away. So we can just set this to zero if we want for now. Um, but I'm just gonna leave it set to something kind of low. And then I'm also going to set the noise texture to 4D because we can animate the, the W value right here and it's just gonna make it wiggle. So we can bring in the scene time node right here. Uh, and just, if you want, you can plug the seconds in directly, but it might move too fast like that, depending on, you know, the scale and the detail. So we can slow it down either with a uh, math node set to multiply or divide. You can use either one. I'm going to set, uh, I'm going to use the multiply, drop it in right there and just set it to like point, uh, two, maybe something like that. You can change this to whatever you want later. So what we're seeing right now is, um, you know, the noise move uh, by this amount right here. Okay, so now we can uh, animate it. So basically, we want it to start right here. Um, actually, let's, let's turn this over here to the dope sheet for now. Um, let's press N to get rid of that and um, make sure we're at the very beginning. So I'll use a shift and the left arrow and we can set this right here. Press I while hovering over it and we'll, it'll insert that. I'll move forward maybe like 100 frames, push this all the way and insert another frame. You can see right there. Now this is what we have. We can mess with the timing later if we don't think it's good. But now at this point also, I want to uh, insert a keyframe right here and also right here. And if you can't see anything popping up over here, you might have to select the nodes right there for them to, to come up over here. Okay, so now uh, let's move like maybe a, a hundred more frames, something like that. And we can push this upward and we can also, you know, push the scale out as well. Just make sure this goes off screen like that. And when you have it where you want it, you can press I, insert some more keyframes. So now this, is what we have. They settle and then they move away. So I like to change the default curves. Um, so I just pressed control tab to go into the graph editor right there. Just selecting all these nodes, select everything. And uh, I think it's T. Let's change this to one of these in the middle. Um, I'll use Quintic right here. And so basically it's going to um, move the way that we don't want to. For the beginning, you can see it will move really fast. I want it to move a lot more smoother, uh, a lot smoother. So uh, I'll select this curve right here, um, press Control E and choose Ease Out. Actually, I think that's the wrong one. So use this one over here. I just selected that T, Ooh. Control E, Ease Out. You can see now it's going into it much smoother like that, pauses, and then it takes off. So to make this a little smoother, we can basically just select only these two nodes right here and move it a little closer. I'm just moving it on the, um, the X axis like that. So now we just wanna make sure it pause, pauses for only the amount of time that we actually want it to pause right there. So that's pretty smooth now. Okay, so obviously these are not bubbles yet. 
um, to make them bubbles, we can just instance onto these points. So let's use uh, an instance on points node right here. And I'll just use an icosphere. You can drag that on. It's probably going to be way too big. So let's set this to something like 0.1, maybe, maybe 0 0.08, 0 0.05. That's probably good. Uh, and let's turn the subdivisions up by one. Let's set these smooth, set shade smooth right there. And we can randomize the scale a little with a random value node. And I'm just going to keep this set to float because we want all of these values to be the same. So none of them are like tall and stuff like that. We can plug this in directly like that. So then we get some small, some large like that. I'll maybe set this to like 0 0.3, 0 0.5, something like that. So we don't get any that are like way too small. Okay, and I guess last is a material. I mean, you could go really far, spend a lot of time on the materials if you really want to, but we don't actually have a material to add except for this one that I have in all of my files. So add a new one over here and I'll call it bubble. And then we can select it over here, bubble like that. So let's go to the shading tab now, right here. I'll press zero to look through the camera. Let's switch into render view. I'm using Eevee for this. If you want, you can use cycles and it'll probably look a lot better, but that's what we're doing. I'm just going to make the background uh, transparent. So under film, you can set this to transparent like that. All right. Um, what else? Um, so what we're going to do is make this transparent, but I want the edges to be shiny. So uh, with Eevee, if you want things that are uh, materials that are transparent, you have to turn that on. It's like an extra option. So press N over here. Under options, change the blend mode to alpha blend like that. And if you have shadows and you want those to be transparent also, um, you have to change the shadow mode. I don't, I'm not really worried about this because we're not going to have shadows casted on anything, but you could use something like alpha hashed. There's no alpha blend. Alpha hashed is probably the closest other thing. Uh, but the way we're going to do it is we're going to keep using the principled BSDF, but I'm also going to bring in a transparent uh, shader right there and also a mix shader right here. So now when we plug it in, you can see that as I turn this up, it will become more transparent. If you leave it really low, it kind of looks like clouds. It's like fake volumetrics kind of, which is pretty neat, but that's not what we're doing. We're going to use a layer weight node right here. Uh, if you want, you can use Fresnel. It's probably more accurate or realistic or whatever, but I'm gonna use facing because I like it. So you can preview this with control shift and left click if you're using the Node Wrangler add-on, which I am, and you should also. Um, so this is just previewing uh, this one right here. Let's just turn this up, or down rather, so that the edges are just visible like that. I think that's pretty good for now. Basically, everything that is black is going to choose the first shader. Everything that's white is going to choose the second shader. So this should make it so that the middle is transparent when we plug it in. Uh, it looks a little broken. Let's see if I swap these. I guess I did it the wrong way around. Let's see. Oh, no. I, yeah. Yeah, this, this is the way that it needs to be. Okay. Let's plug this back in. And this looks pretty good for now. It's not very realistic. You would expect bubbles to be more shiny. So what we can do, I'm actually going to make these metallic. I'm just going to turn them all the way up. Um, we can also try turning the roughness all the way down to make them more shiny. And if you want the reflections to really pop, you can turn the specular up also like that. So now these are really going to look different depending on like the HDRI you're using. And this one is not really like underwater. These could be, you know, originally the uh, person on Discord wanted this to be underwater. So you can, you know, change the HDRI to make it look more water-like. Um, let's see, one of them that I have, we can go to world settings. I'll just clear this. Uh, I have some already on my computer. They're all free. Um, I believe I got them from Polyhaven. They have a bunch of free ones there. 
The one that I think will look pretty nice is maybe one of these fields. So let's try Evening Meadow uh, and let's turn, where is it? Let's make the background transparent again. We could maybe set this a little lower like that. Maybe add a light up top so we, now we have some reflections also. And this is just a plain up here, it's a, a plain uh, area light, that's what it's called. Yeah, so select that. This is what I have it set to right now. But um, yeah, so this is what it looks like. I think it looks okay. Obviously, if you want, you can add way more bubbles by coming over to distribute points on faces and just like turn this up quite a bit. Also, another quick tip. Um, if you want this to run smoother in Eevee when you're playing it, you can uh, turn uh, off viewport denoising and a lot of the time it will run a little smoother. It, uh, it adds some weird artifacts when you, uh, when you have it on. I don't know. Oh yeah, I guess it's worth saying that if you want a background that looks underwater, you could find free pictures on uh, sites like Unsplash or Pexels.com, um, or you could just like look up pictures for inspiration and make a similar gradient, blur the background, things like that. Uh, I don't think it's worth putting this into like an actual like liquid simulation. Um, I'm not going to do that in this video, but um, that's probably how I would go about doing it if I wanted it to look like it was underwater. I would just find a picture, make a background. You could also add some volumetrics to make it look a little more foggy um, so that when lights uh, shining down will like kind of cast rays and uh, you know it'll look more like how you expect underwater to look. But um, yeah, so that's it for this one. If you want the file, you can get it on uh, Patreon. Um, you can also watch all of these videos much, much earlier because this is where I'm putting all of the second channel's videos first, uh, probably for like a week or so. Um, all right. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.